All right, we're now on to section five. And section five is looking at, continuously looking at finding enthalpy, but this time we're gonna use Hess's law. So as a reminder, the last video that we looked at, or the last uh, series of videos that we looked at, started to look at the different methods of finding enthalpy. And the, what, the last videos that we saw started with experimentally. And experimentally is by far the hardest to find the enthalpy because you know you have to actually get into the lab, you gotta actually perform the experiment, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. The good news now is that so many experiments have been done and repeatedly that we actually have available to us as scientists a lot of data that now what we can do is we can use that data to calculate enthalpy in other ways. And so there's three remaining ways that we are gonna calculate enthalpy, and that's Hess's law, standard heats of formation, and then bond dissociation energies. And starting off with Hess's law, and Hess's law is actually one of my favorites because they're kind of like little puzzles, and you're gonna see what I mean by that in just a moment. So here is essentially the essence of Hess's law. Hess's law states that if you can add two or more chemical equations to arrive at a final chemical equation, you can also add up the enthalpies of those chemical equations to determine the overall enthalpy. Now, you're like, what? Okay, so essentially what that he's saying, what, uh, what Hess's law states is that, hey, let's take, for example, these three chemical equations with their respective changes in enthalpy. What he's saying is, if there's a way that you can add up these three equations to get one overall equation, you can also then add up these enthalpies to get an overall enthalpy. Now that makes sense, like, okay, add the equations, add the enthalpies, cool. So all I have to do is just add these three together and get the overall enthalpy, right? Well, kind of. Sometimes you have to do a little finagling with these equations here, so that way they'll add up perfectly to get the overall equation that you want. And we're gonna cover that in the next slide. But what do I mean by adding the equations together? What does that mean? Well, when you're adding equations together, the chemicals that are on the same side of the arrow are gonna to add together. So for example, if you have the same chemicals on the reactant side, they'll add together. And if you have the same chemicals on the product side, they'll add together. And if you have chemicals that are on the opposite sides of the arrow, so reactant and product, they'll cancel each other out. So for example, if I were to add up these three chemical equations here, what would I end up having? Well, here's what I do. I say, okay, um, I have reactant A. Do I see A anywhere else? Nope. Okay, so then reactant A ends up staying, and that ends up coming down here in the final equation. Okay. I have reactant B. Do I have B anywhere else? Yes, I do. But it's on the product side here, reactant side here. So what do they do if they're on the opposite sides of the arrow? They will cancel out. All right. I have product C. And if I look here, oh, look, I also have C, but it's written as a reactant in this equation. So since they're on opposite sides of the arrow, those are going to cancel. I have react or product D. And where else do I have D? Oh, look, I have D down here, but it's as a reactant. So opposite sides of the arrow, they cancel out. Reactant G, product G, cancels out. So those are going to completely cancel there. And now I have product K, which is nowhere else. So that's going to be down here in the final. I have reactant R. That's nowhere else. So that's going to come down here. And then finally, I have product T which that is nowhere else, and so that's gonna come down here. And so by adding these three equations together, what was the overall net equation or result of adding those three? It's right here. So you pull down all the reactants and products that don't get canceled out, and that would be your overall reaction. As a result, these three enthalpies get added together, and that would be your overall enthalpy. So now let's take a look at some properties of enthalpy that are gonna be able to help us out when we move on to Hess's law. So like I said in the previous slide, you may need to finagle or tweak the equations so that way that they add up to get you the final equation that you want. So how do you tweak the equations? Well, there's two ways that we can do that and that's using the two properties of enthalpy. So in order to make chemical equations add together, you need to use the following two properties of enthalpy. The first one is, changing the amounts. 
If you change the amounts in a balanced equation, you change the enthalpy in the exact same way. So as an example, suppose I have this equation, this balanced equation here. Two, one, two are the coefficients that are in this equation, right? And the resulting enthalpy is listed over here. Well, what if I doubled all the coefficients? So four, two, four. Since I doubled the equation, I double the enthalpy. I just multiply this by, whoop, multiply this by two. And it's not always double. You can triple, you can quadruple, you can cut in half. You can do anything you need to in order to make the equation be how you need it. And the second property of enthalpy is by simply reversing the reaction. So if you reverse the reaction, you reverse the sign of enthalpy. So, whoop. So if we have the hydrogen and oxygen reacting to create water, and that's a negative 571.7 enthalpy change, if I flip the reaction, so the products become the reactant and the reactants become the products, then I just change the sign. It's now positive 571.7. And so these two properties of enthalpy are going to help us finagle the equations so that way they get they add together to be what we want. All right, so with that being said, let's look at some examples. So it says, given the following data, and it gives us two chemical equations with resulting enthalpies, find the delta H of the following reaction. Essentially, I want these two reactions to add together to give me this reaction. Because if they do, then I can add these enthalpies together to get me the delta H for this reaction down here. Now, it would be really nice and easy if we could just say, okay, let's just add these together and boom, answer is done. But we need to make sure first that these two reactions here actually do add together to give us this. So here's what you do. This is how I, I solve it. This is the reaction that we're trying to solve for, right? So what I need to do is make sure that these two reactions up here match what it is down here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure there are two carbon dioxides and I need to make sure they're on the reactant side, right? Because that's, that's how they are. They're right over here. So let's come up here. Where is the carbon dioxide? Let's see. It's not there, not there. Okay, there's carbon dioxide. Is it anywhere else? No, 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 and no. Carbon dioxide is located right here. You see that? So first question is, do you have the correct quantity? Yes, I do. I need there to be two and I do have two. Excellent. But the problem is it's on the wrong side of the equation. The two carbon dioxides are up here as a product and I need them to be as a reactant. So what am I gonna do? I am going to flip this reaction. And so let's actually do that. So these two products are going to become reactants. So two CO2 plus two H2O yields these two reactants become the products, C2H4 plus 3O2. And as a result of flipping the reaction, I flip the sign of this enthalpy. So it would be positive 1411.1 kilojoules. And so now I can get rid of this. Okay, I'm, not, I'm just gonna cross it out and not even look at it anymore okay, because this is now my new equation. And just to remind me of what I've done, I put I got those two carbon dioxides now on the reactant side, and that's exactly what I wanted down here. And I should be um, being good and writing the states of matter um, because the states of matter do matter, no pun intended, um, but just for space, I, I didn't write those. But uh, a carbon dioxide gas needs to cancel out with a carbon dioxide gas. so. It can't cancel out with a solid carbon dioxide. Um, so keep that in mind. But it was gas, and so I, I knew that that was good. Okay, what's the next thing? I need to have three waters, and I need to have them also on the reactant side. So let's go up to the top, and let's see where the waters are at. Okay, um, here's a water, okay? But also, there's a water right here. You see that? And so since there's waters in two places, Let's actually skip that for now. What I usually do is if there's double of anything, skip it, come back to it. Most likely it'll work itself out. So we're actually gonna skip this one. I'm gonna next go to the C2H5OH. I need one of them, okay, because there's a coefficient one, and I need it to be on the product side. 
Well, here's the C2H5OH, excellent, but uh, it's on the wrong side, right? You have the correct quantity, there's one of them, but it's on the wrong side. So I also need to flip this reaction as well. And so, as of, so let's do that down here. So these two products are gonna become reactants. So C2H4 plus H2O yields, this product is now a reactant. Or sorry, this reactant's now a product. C2H5OH. And so as a result of that, what happened to my delta H? It flipped, it's now negative 43.6 kilojoules. And so I'm gonna cross this out because it no longer is a thing, because I've now flipped it. And look at, as a result of me flipping that reaction, I have the C2H5 as a, as a product, and that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, now think about this. We should be done with the problem, because I have tweaked both of these reactions. So if I, if, if I have to tweak them again, then I'm just gonna undo everything I've already done. So let's just double check and make sure everything cancels out. I need three oxygens and I need them to be on the product side. There's my three oxygens on the product side. Nowhere else are there three oxygens. And remember we skipped the three waters? Well, here's two waters. You're like, oh my gosh, we, we need three. Well, look, you also have a water down here. And since they're both on the reactant side, they add together. So two plus one gives us those three waters. And here's the cool thing, everything else should cancel out. This C2H4 and this C2H4, since they're on opposite sides of the arrow, they cancel. And so do these two equations here and here, do they add up to give us this overall equation? Yes, they do. We tweaked them so that they add up to give us the overall equation. So now that these two equations here, one and two, add up, we can now take this enthalpy and this enthalpy and add them together. So let's see, I, I'm gonna take the positive 1411.1 kilojoules plus the negative 43.6, and I end up getting the overall delta H for this reaction is positive 1367.5 kilojoules. That would be my answer there. And I used Hess's law to do it. All right, um, so that is the basis, basis of Hess's law. We are gonna do some more practice, but we're gonna do that in the next video.